Okay, so first question, it says match each building with the geometric shapes that can be used to model it. Um, so you're looking at the shapes that are part of that building and you're just identifying shapes. So I noticed that right here we have a cone. So you would click this and it would like shadow inside the box, but for right now we'll just kind of bubble it in. It's a cone right there. And then you also have two cylinders right here. So we would also choose cylinders. And that's what it's looking for. That then on the next one, we just choose what shapes we see there. Well, I see a cylinder, a bunch of cylinders, cool, so you choose cylinder. And then the actual building itself is a rectangular prism, so then you would choose rectangular prism. Okay, and then the next one is kind of hard to see because it's not in color, but on the actual test, this would be on, in color so you can see the different dimension to it. Um, so just kind of zooming in and I'll point out the different parts. So this part right here is actually a pyramid. And like I said, on the computer it'll have more color to it so you'll be able to see the pyramid better. And then if you look very carefully right here, there is actually a cone. So there is a cone right here. And then, oh, it's blurry. This right here is actually a cylinder. And then the rectangular part of the building would be a rectangular prism. So in this case, it has a cone, it has a cylinder, it has a pyramid, and it has a rectangular prism. Next one. This one you've seen a couple times before. I also signed it on Khan Academy that last week. It says that you have a rectangle and you're rotating it around this horizontal line um, and it wants to know what shape it creates. Well, the answer would be A. Okay, next one. So I'm just gonna move down to number 18. It says, Nicole, Jeremy, and Francis each perform a transformation on triangle RST. Each recorded his or her transformation in location of S prime in the table. Point S of triangle RST is located at five, negative seven. So we're gonna write that down. Point S is at five, negative seven. That is the original point. Then it's saying that S prime is at these locations, so different transformations. So S prime is at negative 6, 12. So you're seeing how they move this to get to this. Um, and it shows right here that it's a translation. So this would be X and this would be Y in terms of like that translation right there. They're saying X plus what equals negative 6. So this would be X, the 5. 5 plus what equals negative 6? That would be negative 11. And then for y, it says y is negative 7. Negative 7 plus what equals 12? That would be 19. Okay, the next one, it is a dilation, like they're multiplying. So again, x is five and y is negative seven. So what times, like five times what equals negative 15? That would be negative three, I heard it, good job. So negative three times five would be the negative 15. So this must be negative three. And then for B, our y is negative 7, we're trying to get to 21, so we would multiply by negative 3 to get positive 21. The next one is a little bit trickier because there's more steps here. So we have ax plus 1 equals negative 4, and then by minus 6 equals 8. Now your x and y are these values right here. So 
a times five plus one equals negative four. And then your yb times negative seven minus six equals eight. And you can just solve these for a and b. So five a And so I get, I should have used a different color, negative 1 and negative 2. Okay, next one, we're going up to the top. Okay, so here is a proof. Um, what's interesting about these proof problems on FSA is they don't want to f want you to fill in all those blanks. For this one, it just says drag the correct statement to complete line three of the proof. So we're literally only looking for what goes in line three, which is right here. So the statement and the reason. Okay, so here it says, given PQRS is a parallelogram, so it's saying that this is a parallelogram. It also says that PQ is equal to QR. Cool. And we're trying to prove that it's a rhombus, and a rhombus has all sides equal. Well, I can already see what they're getting at. If this is equal to this, and then on a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal, then if I prove that opposite sides are equal, I can prove that all the sides are the same. So our given would be this statement and this statement that goes here, but you wouldn't actually have to drag it. It just helps you with this, like, visualizing the whole proof. Then once you have that, it would be a matter of saying that, and I'm looking at the different reasons. The first reason is diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. As much as that could be true, we're not, we don't need diagonals for this proof. Opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. Um, yeah, but we're not looking at angles, we're looking at side length. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Okay, that is what I'm looking for, for my reason. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. And then as far as the statement, I'm looking for the statement that says this. So I see PQ equals SR. So they're showing that opposite sides are equal. Yes, this one. PQ equals SR and PS equals congruent to QR. So you just take this and drag and drop it there. Okay, number 14 is one that we, we've seen a similar one like this before. Um, the directions say to prove that these are similar. So circle A has a center, ooh, it's so tiny, great. Logan performs two transformations of circle A to show that circle A is similar to circle B. He first dilates the circle and then he translates the new circle. Okay, so to prove that these are similar, you want them to like, get like right on top of it, like all line up. So that way, like if you were to dilate the shape, it should land exactly on the other one. And if that happens, then they are similar. So it says that we have to dilate it first, then translate it. So it's two steps and they tell us which order they want. Okay, so we have circle A and circle B. Um, the radius of circle A is one and the radius of circle B is three. So three over one, your scale factor is three. So we would do three times X and three times Y to get it the same size as circle B. And then for this one, we're translating it. So to get A right on top of B, we would have to move it over to the right one unit. So this would be X plus one and then we have to move it down two units. So that would be x minus two. Y minus two, thank you, appreciate it.
Yes, y minus 2. Good job. OK. Moving down. OK, circle theorems. Um, it says, what is the value of x if arc AB right here is 45 and CD is 42? OK, well, this angle is actually the average of these two arcs. So you can do 42 plus 45 divided by 2 and get that answer. So this would be 87 divided by 2. Um, looking at the answer choice, it must be 43.5 degrees. OK, next. Ooh, I'm going to type in the box. OK, Kyle defines a circle as a set of all the points equidistant from a given point. Explain why Kyle's definition is not precise enough. OK, so a circle, um, a bunch of points equidistant from a given point. Sure. But all the points equidistant from that point would actually make a sphere, not just a circle. So why is it not precise enough? This definition is for a sphere. Definition. Definition is for a sphere. He should specify the points are on one plane. Because then it would be a circle. Next one, Leaning Tower of Pisa. Um, Leaning Tower of Pisa is 56.84 meters long, and it shows that length right here. In 1990, the engineers restored the building, so the angle Y changed from 5.5 to 3.99 degrees. To the nearest hundredth of a meter, how much did the restoration change the height of the Leaning Tower of Pisa? OK, we're actually going to use trig for this one. So we're going to draw two triangles, because we have two different situations. OK, so in this first one, the angle measure is going to be 5.5 degrees. And then for the second one, the angle is going to be 3.99. The, like, this side right here is going to st stay 56.84, 56.84. And then the height right here is what's going to change. So this is going to be our x. OK, so we're going to find the height of both of them, then subtract those heights to find the difference. So using SOHCAHTOA, we have hypotenuse and adjacent, hypotenuse and adjacent. So that would be cosine. So cosine of 5.5 .5 is x over 56.84 and cosine of 3.99 is x over 56.84. OK, so once we have those set up, then you could plug them in a calculator. You would multiply both sides by 56.84. 56.84 times cosine of 5.5. And this comes out to x equals 56.5783. And then over here, you would do the same thing. And x comes out to. 56.70223. Then you would subtract the two numbers. And it comes out to 0.1239.
It says the, to round the answer to the nearest hundredth of a meter, so that would be this place. So your answer would be 0.12. Okay, one okay. Last but not least, what is the measure of arc AB? So this arc right here. Um, well, it shows an inscribed angle here of 70 degrees. And to find this whole part right here, you would multiply that by 2 to get 140 degrees for this whole area. And then you can do 140 minus 30 to get this part. So 140 minus 30 is 110 degrees. So this must be 110 degrees. And it doesn't look like it's to scale, but that's all right. OK, so just leave this out on your desk. I'll come around and give you credit. You can get a laptop, get started on Khan Academy.